Hi, my name is Emily, and I'm here today to talk about vaping as a part of a public service announcement for parents of teens and young adults. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the facts about vaping, what are some of the risks and harms associated with it, and how to talk to your kids about vaping. So, um, let's get started. So before having the talk with your teen or young adult, it's important to get the facts. Here are some things that we would like you to know. Number one, vaping is not harmless. And here are some of the reasons for that. Number one, it can increase exposure to harmful chemicals. It can lead to nicotine addiction. A lot of the long-term consequences of vaping are unknown. And also sometimes it's rare, but defective vaping products, especially battery powered vaping products can catch fire or explode and leading to burns or injuries. So a lot of the reason for us not knowing the longer term consequences of vaping is that number one, vaping is a relatively new product, but also it's many of the products that are being sold are being sold online and many and there is a lot of unregulated products that are being sold to teens and young adults throughout North America and as a result of this there are varying levels this there are varying levels of harmful chemicals such as nicotine in vaping products, which we will talk about a little bit more on the next slide with some of the risks of nicotine. So next I would like to talk about the risks of nicotine. So nicotine is a highly addictive chemical and the reason for this is that it is a stimulant. So which means that with the intake of a nicotine product such as vaping and e-cigarettes, what happens is that it increases the heart rate and adrenaline and endorphins while at the same time reducing any, which reduces any anxiety and depression that a person may be experiencing. However, Youth are especially susceptible to its negative consequences as it can lead to their as it can lead to alterations in their brain development, which can affect memory and concentration. It can also lead to addiction and physical dependence. Uh, children and youth can become more dependent on nicotine more rapidly than adults. Although not all vaping products contain nicotine, the majority of them do. Nicotine and the levels of nicotine and other chemicals vary widely. They can vary widely. So although some vaping liquids have low levels or can have lower levels, uh, but many have the same or the same similar or higher levels of nicotine than a typical cigarette. Quitting vaping can be, a cha can be challenging once a teen or young adult is addicted or has developed an addiction to nicotine. Um, the withdrawal symptoms can be very unpleasant. Um, and we're gonna talk about in the next slide uh, some of the signs to look out for. But even if a vaping product does not contain nicotine, there is still a high risk of being exposed to other very harmful chemicals. And vaping can, and like we said before, uh, vaping nicotine can alter brain development. So what are the four C's to look out for? So courtesy of the Canadian Association uh, of Mental Health, CAMH, they have uh, limited to some of the signs of addiction to these four C's. Number one, craving. So what happens with vaping is that 
it may start off as, you know, they're just getting together with their friends. They're just, you know, blowing off some steam. They just want to have fun. And then over time, what can happen is, oh, I really liked that experience and that time. Let's repeat that. So that creates a craving, which then over time, if it's not addressed, can lead to addiction. It can lead to higher frequency and an amount of to of a substance such as nicotine in vape in vaping, which can lead to a loss of control. And so as I talk about compulsion, how it becomes compulsive is that when we become addicted to any substance, it can be nicotine, it can be vaping, it can be cigarettes, it can be alcohol, it can be drugs, it can be technology, food, sex, shopping, a variety of other things. What happens is that the craving and the loss of control become can lead to compulsive behaviors. So someone who is addicted, no matter what they're addicted to, they have to consistently get, um, sorry, I'm stuttering over my words a little bit today. Um, so the thing with compulsion with, the two C's craving and loss of control leading to compulsion. What will happen when someone is addicted to vaping, for instance, or any substance is that what happens over time is that, so our bodies crave homeostasis or balance. What this does is that the addiction is now embedded in our psyches and our mental health and also in our bodies physically we end up craving like we end up needing to have that fix we need to have that craving fix we need to have um higher and higher dosages of vaping and nicotine, for instance, because our bodies just, our bodies and our minds get used to it being there. And this can happen despite negative consequences, whether that means um, it puts a strain on finances, on relationships, on the jobs or school, or anything like that. When a person is addicted, they they may know the consequences of their actions, of what it can have on themselves and or the people around them, but they're not in control of themselves. The addiction has taken over and hijacked their brains and their bodies which is why vaping is particularly dangerous for teens and young adults because they're still in development mode. They're still developing into the adults that they will become. But when it comes to the consequences of it, someone who is highly addicted to something, they cannot stop without professional intervention so please, as you're having these conversations with your teen and young adult, please talk to your local healthcare providers for more resources if that's needed. So I want to talk briefly about vaping versus smoking. So for people who smoke, uh, completely replacing cigarette smoking will reduce their exposure to harmful chemicals. However, this is not a safe alternative. 
for youth who use nicotine products, including cigarettes and vaping. If you suspect your child is addicted to nic nicotine, again, please talk to your health care provider. So, uh, vaping can also, vaping products can also come in the form of liquids. And the ingredients typically found in, in vaping liquids can include uh, glycerol, candied flavors, propylene glycol, and vary, varying levels of nicotine. The long-term safety of inhaling these substances in vaping products is unknown and is continuing to be assessed. The heating process can cause reactions and create new chemicals such as formaldehyde. Some contaminants such as metals might also get into products, into the vaping products and then into the aerosol. So again, one of the dangers of vaping is that many vaping products come from very unregulated industries that are on the internet and they can come from anywhere in the world. So, and they will have, and depending on where the products are purchased, the region in which they're from may have different standards of practice and different regulations for how to sell and distribute and buy vaping products online. So, and as a result of this, we don't know, we don't know exactly the kinds of chemicals that are in vaping products. So what we recommend is again, to talk to your healthcare provider and to talk to your teens and teens and young adults about what are some of the risks associated from what we do know. So, did you know? Data from a recent Health Canada survey showed that 23% of students between grades 7 to 12 have tried an electronic cigarette. Vaping devices may also have been used for other substances like cannabis. Vaping products can be difficult to recognize because Devices come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some resemble, can resemble a USB flash drive. Liquids can have high levels of nicotine and come in a variety of flavors. Um, and because of this, vaping does, may not leave a lingering identical smell unlike tobacco products. And add-ons like vinyl skins or wraps can make these harder to recognize. So yes, absolutely, that is part of the appeal and the danger of vaping products is that they can look like inconspicuous objects and also they are less, dis, uh, less stigmatized compared to uh, cigarette smoking because they don't have an unpleasant odor associated with it you can change up what you what you vape um, it can be say like watermelon or peach or apple or bananas or anything like that um, vaping products um, also have many names such as e-cigarettes, vape pens, vapes, mods, tanks, e-hookahs, and they may also be known by various brand names. Uh, currently, the legislation around tobacco and vaping products prohibits vaping products to be sold or given to anyone under 18. Be aware of the laws of your province or territory as some have increased the age to 19. So what can I do? I recommend the acronym TALK. So take the time and the initiative, but do not rush or stall conversations. 
when you were talking with your teen or young adult, assume nothing. Have an open mind to what they have to say. Practice active listening skills and also uh, treat them with kindness, honesty, and compassion. And here are some tips of what it could look like in action. So how to start the conversation. Find the right moment. Take advantage of situations where you can talk about vaping. It doesn't have to be formal. For example, when passing by a group of teenagers who are vaping, take the opportunity to have a conversation with your teen or young adult about it. Discuss the facts and correct any misconceptions. When you are having the conversation, you want to avoid criticism and encourage an open dialogue. Remember that your goal is to have a meaningful conversation and not to give a lecture. Thank your teen or young adult for being honest if they tell you that they have tried vaping or vape regularly. Then offer some information about the risks of vaping and discuss the benefits of being smoke and vape free. Also, you'll want to talk to your healthcare provider with you and your teen or young adult about the risks of vaping and ways to go smoke and vape free, or if you want to use harm reduction strategies. Consider suggesting that your teen or young adult talk to other trusted adults, such as relatives, teachers, faith leaders, coaches, or counselors who whom you know and are aware of the risks of vaping. These supportive adults can help reinforce the, your message. And also always we wanna set a positive example. So if you use tobacco and or vaping products, be honest with your teen about the risks and also what your experiences have, have been, any regrets or difficulties and health effects that have resulted from your experience. Talk with your teen or young adult about when and why you started to smoke or vape and explain how you thought it would make you feel and how it is affecting your health. It is never too late to quit smoking. If you are vaping, to help quit smoking, talk to your teen about it. Talk to them about addiction and how hard it can be to quit smoking. And remember that quitting smoking is possible. For free help, visit gosmokefree.gc.ca forward slash quit or call the following number 1-866-366-3667. And just a reminder that vaping is not for youth and non-smokers. Continuing on with the conversation, don't expect to have just one conversation with your teen or young adult. Odds are you will probably need to talk about the subject many times and in many different places. Strike up a conversation again whenever you have some time to get together. You will also find that as your teen, your teen and young adult grows, your conversations about vaping will change and reflect their growing maturity, maturity intellectual abilities, and the pressures they face. Keep in mind that when talking about it can also set the stage for important discussions about tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, drugs, and other risky behaviors. So I'd like to th say thank you for joining me today on how to talk to your teens and young adults about the risks of vaping. I hope that you have learned something informative from this presentation. If you'd like to know more information, please visit the Government of Canada's website at www.canada.ca for more information. And as always, please feel, feel free to, to, to talk to your local healthcare providers about more information. Uh, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup and gracias.